before we get into today's video, I just want to give a shout out to Charlie Sion. I'm not sure if I said his last name right. If I didn't, I apologize. But shout out to him, man, for bringing this type of subject where we could come together as a community and as a society and have discussions about this type of stuff in the comments. You know, we really appreciate it because, you know, mainstream media wouldn't cover these type of topics. Even if they do, they'll be biased on one side or they will tiptoe around the subject, but they wouldn't come, come straight out up front and have a full-blown discussion about stuff like this. So shout out to Charlie for this, man. I'll put a link in the description to the video on his channel. Hop over there and show him some love, man. Waste, waste no time. Let's hop into today's video. Hi, guys. I'm here to talk about the rampant anti-Asian racism I'm seeing from the black community. I started this YouTube channel a year ago to bring light to this specific issue. If you're here because of my last video, I have one thing to ask of you. Please like and watch the video in its entirety that will broaden the video's reach. At the end of this video, I make a public demand. So I already know what some of you are going to say. This is causing racial division. We need solidarity. Not all black people are doing this. Why are you generalizing? Why people are racist against Asians too? Why aren't you talking about that? What about the anti-blackness in the Asian community? It's the media that's making it seem like black people are harming Asians more. Yeah, this video is meant for you to hopefully serve as a cold dose of reality. If you count yourself to be an open-minded person, I ask you to listen to what I have to say before jumping on to the comment section. The precise reason why I want to talk about this is because we live in a society where we Asian people can feel free to talk day and night about how white people are racist against us, but are immediately silenced when we try to talk about the anti-Asianness in the black community. And I, while I was walking down the streets from my, from my high school to Walgreens, I was walking with three of my uh, friends from both China and Taiwan crossing the crosswalk. There is a car just rush, like rushed through us, driven by an African American, shouting that go, go back to your home, like go back from where you are from. We are not hurt. It's just shocked and scared of our safety. And this white lady uh, kindly asked, "Can I, uh, can I call the police? Can I do anything for you?" We we're like, "It's okay. Thank you very much for your care." The point I'm making here is that we should not distinguish people by their race or or gender or anything. Black people can be racist. White people, sorry. Oh, no. I, 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 I will make it. I will drag this time. Let her talk. Let her talk. Let's start by saying. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did she just, as soon as she said black people can be racist too, she shuts her down? So, so. We allow, we, well, not exactly, but you guys know what I mean, that you could come out here and say the most disrespectful thing to other races, but as soon as they express how they feel, they get shut down. And we talk about being oppressed. What are you, what are you doing to her? You oppressing the way how she feels. She's not being disrespectful. She, you could tell she's kind of hurt in the way she's speaking in her voice. She's expressing to you how she feels. And instead of you coming out and, and consoling her and telling her, sorry that you had to go through that, sorry that you felt that way, but not all black people are like that. Instead of you doing that, it seemed like she came out there to try to shut her down. That's wrong. That's wrong. And and that's, that's part of the black community that I just don't like it has to be a two-way street we, we can't say we oppress while we oppress other people by the way that they feel everybody everybody has the right to express their feelings and the way they feel if you don't that's when you go into depression because there's no out there's no way for you and that's when people go there they attack they hurt others like, you know what they say hurt people hurt people I, I will try this Let's start by saying, I have very much a problem when a person of any race, white, black, Latino, or otherwise, commit hate crimes against Asian people. It makes my blood boil. And let's also start off by saying that when a black person harms an Asian person, that doesn't mean that all black people are suddenly responsible for that. Just mm -hmm. as in the same vein, when a white person harms an Asian person, that doesn't mean that all white people are responsible for it. I think I need to say this because our world is going crazy. You mm -hmm. are only personally responsible for things that are within your control. You're only responsible for your own acts, nothing else. But then we can't just say black people harming Asians are the actions of the few and then end the conversation there. 
because of the sheer magnitude of the problem. The near daily attacks, black people cussing Asian people out, punching and spitting and kicking Asian people and killing Asian people. I had to pause it there real quick. That what brings me up to the whole incident that happened with um the COVID-19. You remember when they said where it came from? When they came from China and those parts of the world? In New York City, like that said, like about six, seven months into COVID, there were videos of black Americans attacking Asian Chinese people. I mean attacking them for no reason whatsoever. They minding their business, walking. They will sucker punch them. That's wrong. How are you going to blame them for what's going on in China? They living over here. That's what I said is wrong. You can't go around blaming people for what other people doing. That is wrong. We can't do that. So what if, you know, we got gangs. So what if everybody put all black people in that same category? You will, you will say to yourself, but that's not, that's, not, that's not right. That's unfair. I don't gang bang. I'm not in a gang. It's the same thing. You can't go wrong abusing other people for what others are doing from their race. That is wrong. We can't do that. It was sad, sad and it was older Asian people that were doing that too. You a young man. You a young black man. Sucker punching an old lady. The disrespect. There are dozens to hundreds of these cases every month, especially in the city of San Francisco. This is happening mm -hmm. every day. And if you're saying hundreds, you're exaggerating. This is why I need to make this video. People are not realizing the magnitude of what's going on because the national news media is not broadcasting this fact as incessantly as one might expect if there were hundreds of videos each month of black people getting punched, spat on, and kicked. Only the rare, exceptionally grotesque cases makes it onto the national news. At the height of the pandemic, they shined a quick and passing light on a number of these videos only because within that concentrated period of time, it became too obvious that this was happening and they could not afford to ignore it without losing the public's trust. But this is happening to this day and your average anti-Asian hate crime makes it all the way up to local news. And the scattered and dispersed nature of reporting on what is happening means this problem is not rising to the public's consciousness. If you want to see the true scale of what's been going on, I recommend you watch my very first YouTube video I made a year ago. I listed out the black on Asian hate crimes that happened within the span of a month. It's one after another happening day after day. And bear in mind, this, these are only cases that A, is reported to the police, and B, that the news media picked up on. It's a small subset of a subset. In reality, there is a bigger undercurrent of this rampant anti asianness that we're talking about. Just within my own circle, I know multiple cases of this happening. They didn't report it to the police and it wasn't picked up by the news. How many more cases like this are out there? And at what point, mm -hmm. after hundreds of these videos, do these cases no longer constitute isolated incidents? So then here's the most important conversation. If this is happening, what do we do about it? As I've said, this doesn't mean that all black people are doing this or that all oh. black people are anti-Asian. But no matter how many oh. times I say that, I found people still go like, oh, why are you generalizing? It's such a disingenuous attempt to deflect from having a conversation about this. And the conversation should go like this. We can all agree that when a black person commits an anti-Asian act or an Asian person commits an anti-black act, that doesn't mean that the entire communities are responsible for their actions. Nope. But to the extent that we're having group level conversations, for example, about the anti-blackness within the Asian community, so too do we need to have group level conversations about the anti-Asianness in the black community. And the reason why this continues to happen is because we're not doing that. If you're saying, oh yeah, we already do, uh, no, we don't. Conversations in private circles do not count. Nope. I'm talking about public discussions. I've kept up with these conversations. I've seen our Asian community so-called leaders have conversations with black community leaders on TV about race relations and talk over and over again about the anti-blackness within the Asian community. And not a single sentence on the anti-Asianness in the black community. Amazingly, I've seen mainstream news channels do special segments about stop Asian hate and mention within these segments the anti-blackness within the Asian community without saying one word about the anti-Asianness in the black community. Mm -hmm. On a segment that's supposed to be about our issues, our Asian leaders having conversations, doing public speeches, and on social media, call out the anti-blackness within our own, which is the right thing to do. But they stay silent as hundreds of videos emerge of black people brutalizing Asians. I've been to stop Asian hate rallies and have seen, again, our so-called leaders denounce on stage the anti-blackness within our community and talk about how white supremacy is dividing us all. And not, not a single word on the anti-Asianness within the black community. 
And in those same rallies, I've seen black activists, which thank you from the bottom of my heart for showing up, but I've seen them come up on stage and talk about anti-Asian hate without mentioning how there's a real anti-Asianist problem in the black community. In fact, I have not heard a single black activist, community leader, politician, media personality with a platform publicly mention a sentence about the rampant anti-Asianist within the black community, much less have a long and sustained conversation about it. Mm -hmm. With the only exception of Sean King. I've seen Asian people be demonized for talking about anti-Asianness in the black community on social media and in real life, while when black people talk about their anti-blackness within the Asian community, everyone nods along as a matter of course. And if you're wondering why all of that is going on, because it wouldn't seem to make sense, right? Why this disparate treatment? The mainstream narrative is that even if it's not a white person harming Asians, it's still white supremacy because white supremacy pits communities of color against one another. Yes. And so even if black people harm Very Asians, true. white supremacy is to blame. And then we're told mm -hmm. we can't have a conversation about anti-Asianness in the black community because it's divisive and we need solidarity and unite against white supremacy. Well, well then, doesn't that same logic flow to the anti-blackness in the Asian community? Mm -hmm. If supposedly white supremacy is at fault when Asian people harm black people because it pits communities of color against one another, isn't talking about anti-blackness in the Asian community also problematic for that same reason because it's divisive and we need solidarity, unite against white supremacy, all of that? Yeah. It doesn't make sense. But I'll give you another explanation that I think more accurately describes what's going on here. What's actually going on here is that the black community has greater political power than the Asian community within the political aisle that purports to represent all of us, the progressive left. With this disparity in political power and influence, we're seeing a situation where anti-blackness in the Asian community is being publicly discussed, but not the anti-Asianness in the black community. Yes, I, I agree with everything that he's saying so far. It's so true. that. We have leaders that will come out and publicly say about how black people are being treated by white supremacy. That's what they say. But, and we see videos during the COVID-19 of Asians being attacked by blacks. None of our leaders are speaking up. Quiet. You already hear is crickets. That is wrong. And the only way, only, only way we saw it was by other people recording on their phones and uploading it on the internet. That's how we got to see it. So imagine what's going on off camera that we are not able to see. That's what, that's what I said. Black people definitely can be racist. And that needs to be addressed. Like Charlie is saying, out openly. And if you're having a discussion about anti asianness in the black community, Keep it about that. And don't try to be so, if you speak your mind, you seem like you're being biased. No, you're not. You're speaking up for what's right. Everybody should be treated equally across the board. Doesn't matter what race you are. And, and this, you know, is the reason why I feel the need to speak up against the wokeism ideology that has taken over the progressive left, because that is the, the thing that is underlying all of this. Because according to the ideology, there are two categories of people, the oppressor and the oppressed. With all the dimensions with which you could form discrete categories of people, race, gender, sexuality, so on and so forth. And within the category of the oppressed, there's rankings of the groups by how oppressed they are. And according to the dictates of this belief system, you can say whatever you want about the oppressor group, but you cannot say anything critical about groups that are higher up in the ladder of oppression, while you can say critical things about the groups lower in the ladder. And so what this ideology does is it accords groups highest up in the oppression ladder the power to dominate social and political discussions as it pertains to these group categories. That is the whole thing behind what so many people believe nowadays, that you cannot be racist to white people because they're in the oppressor group, and that black people cannot be racist because they don't have the power to be racist because they're the highest up in the ladder of the oppressed category. And all the things that I've said earlier about how anti-blackness in the Asian community is discussed in the public sphere, but not the anti-Asianness in the black community, that is a manifestation of this belief system. Some people are under the belief that we can't talk about anti-Asianness in the black community because they're the most oppressed and will silence you by saying mm -hmm. that talking about it is divisive. But they yeah. don't say it's divisive to talk about the anti-blackness within our community. And in, in effect, this gives the black community the power to escape accountability because mm -hmm. they have a support system of people of all races who believe that to hold the black community accountable is to perpetuate the oppression of the group highest up on the oppression ladder and they will attack and vilify anyone who dares to speak about it. 
As it yes. stands, we Asian people are free to talk about the racism we experience from white people all day long. No social repercussions. But we cannot talk about the racism we experience from black people without being canceled. Black people can be racist. White people, sorry. Oh no. Okay. Society tells us that we cannot talk about it. Then what that means is that you don't care about the racism we endure unless it fits your worldview and your agenda. Mm -hmm. So you don't care about anti-Asian racism, you just want to use us as a political pawn. And the same people that adhere to these views, many of them our own people, attempt to put blindfolds over themselves and others in order to explain facts that contradict their belief system. They see hundreds upon hundreds of these videos that have emerged last year, and they say it's the anti-black media that is making it seem like black people are brutalizing Asians when it's white people doing it more. I'm sorry, but oh my god, I'm exhausted with this conspiracy theory BS. <laughs> really? The media? The same mainstream media that espoused progressive views all day long with the one exception of Fox News? The MSNBC mm -hmm. show that has repeatedly had on people that talk about white people having a violent character? Or is it CNN who will run breaking news segments when a sensational story about a white person inflicting violence on a person of color comes along, but tweets that a car, yeah, a car, killed six people when a black man who professes hate for white people on social media rammed through six white people during a Christmas parade? Is it- Yes, yes, hey, shout out to Charlie, man. He's smart, he's, 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 he's alert to what's going on around the world you feel me it, it, it's so true because i said the same thing when i saw it, not that incident but incident before that every time a black person does something or what, what it was an incident i forget where it was on a black person i think it was at walmart right who um i think i think he had killed uh six or seven people in the walmart was black Never mention his race whatsoever. That, that's wrong. But the minute a white person does something, you see it. It's passed it everywhere. But the black person does it. Shh, that's wrong. Why? Why hide the name of, and the race of the individual? But if it's another race, you mention a race. That's what I'm saying. Media does you know put a bend to the narrative it's like same thing with cnn how long were they talking about donald trump when trump wasn't even the president trump was quiet for a while and they were still speaking about donald trump and they are not being held responsible whatsoever for anything i saw when fox had called him out about um the christmas um parade that happened because they didn't want to mention um the guy's race Shot, that's right. He said the same thing. Shout to Fox News, man. You know what I'm saying? I don't agree with everything they say, but same thing you could tell that they are aware of that what's going on. The mainstream media that is making it artificially seem like black people are disproportionately harming Asians? Or is it the case that people are pointing to the less than usual instances where the media is actually showing what's happening on the ground and then saying it's anti-black to show it? The kind of reaction and public backlash, which is the very reason why the media tends not to do this in the first place. And let me ask you a few more questions. If it was actually the case that hundreds of these videos are not representative of reality, that white people are doing it more and that there are thousands of videos of white people brutalizing Asians that the anti-black media is, is sur surreptitiously hiding for the public, wouldn't we have noticed by now? If there were actually thousands of videos of white people brutalizing Asian people, isn't it far more likely that the media would be broadcasting it day after day, talking about this emergency, how white supremacy is endangering Asian Americans, since that has been their talking point all throughout? And if there were to be, hypothetically, hundreds of videos of Asian people beating, spitting, and kicking black people, Will we not be hearing relentlessly in our public discourse how the Asian community mm -hmm. needs to address the anti-blackness within? Wouldn't the black community rightfully be demanding that of us? So why aren't we? We need to start standing up for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Look, I don't need to say much more. If you're interested, you can watch the, the full two-hour video I uploaded a year earlier. Just want to reiterate yet again, if you're a black person who is out there living their life and have done nothing to harm Asian folks, you are not responsible for any of this. Nobody is entitled to demand anything of you just because other black people are committing anti-Asian acts. And I just want to send a clear message to Asian folks that just because this is happening to us doesn't then give us license to respond back with hate to those black people who are not doing this to us. Having said all this, the calculus is different for black communities, political and thought leaders and organizations who are engaging in public race relations discourse in an inequitable manner. So I would like to make the public demand the same demand I made a year ago in my original video. I demand that leaders of the black community whose only comments about the rampant anti-Asian violence amounted to it's because of white supremacy to publicly state that anti-Asianness within the black community is a serious problem. 
and I demand that they lay out a plan, steps to take, to curtail the Black on Asian racial violence that has pervaded our society without anyone saying anything. If we as a society are having ongoing public conversations about anti-Blackness within our community, so too should we expect ongoing public conversations about the anti-Asianness within the Black community. Thank you for watching. Wish me luck. Hey, we got your back, Charlie, man. Yo, that was Charlie Sion. Sion. I hope I said his name right. And I agree with, I agree with everything that he said. It's wrong that the, the, the agenda that they push, making it seem like black people cannot be racist whatsoever. In reality, they can be. We seem to talk about and we came how far we got oppressed and they still got celebrities talking about they are oppressed while they are rich living in a 10 point something million dollar mansion. Lamborghinis, Ferraris, Bentleys, Bugattis, private jets, but they are telling other black people how we are oppressed. You see what I'm talking about? And we're living in the era of the internet, social media, celebrities. A lot of people worship these celebrities. You guys have no idea how they worship these celebrities. And this is what the celebrities are feeding them. Instead of telling them or giving them the, the tools and the strategy how to be successful in life, how you should, you should, you should pride to be more in life. You don't need to be gang banging. You don't need to be selling drugs. You don't need to be disparaging other races. We can't fall. Now this takes this opportunity as a people come together and build something. They don't do that. They do a lot of divisive separation. And I don't know where it's coming from. Or what's the, I know, I, but what is the agenda? Are they getting paid off? Are they getting certain special privilege? You guys give me a take in the comment. I think it's wrong. Lizzo, you worth how much money? How are you being oppressed? Dear Hoogly, you worth millions. How are you being oppressed by white people? If you were being oppressed, you, you, you will be down here with the rest of us. Look at other black YouTubers, how rich and successful they are. By just being on the internet, playing video games, or talking about topics like this, how will we be oppressed? How? That's wrong. But that's the way they push for the new um, generation that's coming up. Because this new generation is all hip to the internet. Glued to the internet. So they might have been brainwashed by this nonsense. There was so much unity in the 90s, in the early 2000s. Everybody was together. It was all love, man. Now we had the internet. People are all just, you know on the internet that shouldn't, like I said in other videos, shouldn't be on the internet because all they're spreading is hate and poison in the mind of these young people that's coming up, which is wrong. And shout out to Charlie again, man. We appreciate it. At least people are waking up to what's really going on. And as, like I said, it's sad to see other black people during COVID-19 that were physically assaulting other Asians in New York City. It's wrong. And I, I, I felt so upset. I was like, what a suck. Like, who raised you to suck a punch an old lady? She looked She looked. she had to be at least 65 years old. And he was like at least 30. It's sad. It's sad. And we don't address stuff like this. We sweep it under the rug. And it's all about us. It's all about us. While we're the ones that are oppressing other people. That have nothing to do with nothing. Hey, if you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe. And until then, give me you guys think about this in the comments. I will be reading the comments. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out. Have a blessed day.